shared with you from John Wesley United Methodist Church in Victoria, Texas.
So now we're going to burn those sheets of paper, those things on which we have listed the things in our lives that need to die, having submitted them to Christ, knowing that his love, his mercy, his grace for our forgiveness. On Easter Sunday, we celebrate our freedom from sin, our freedom from the power of sin and death. And these flames would remind us that Christ has taken our guilt and paid the price and set us free. Easter 2020. <laughs> Different from whatever we would have wanted to serve and wanted to see. Doing things a whole lot differently these days, aren't we? Celebrating Easter in this time might for some be a little difficult. Where do we find the joy? Where do we find the meaning, the purpose, the direction? So as we share together today, I want to ask you to consider some of the alternatives. Well, for instance, what will you remember about Easter 2020? Will it be the lack of gatherings? Families couldn't get together. Worship congregations couldn't get together. Couldn't go to the movies. Couldn't have those outings that we like so much. Or maybe you'll remember the long lines at grocery stores and other places. Maybe you'll concentrate on the bare shelf. Are the folks wearing masks? Or maybe you'll remember the isolation. Some will even remember boredom. I'm not sure how that goes because it seems like we've all been pretty busy during this time. Will you remember those things or, or will you seek to find something new? Something that has been recently created for you. Maybe, maybe you've gotten done a lot of those projects at home that you had been planning on doing, just hadn't gotten to. Maybe you've reinvigorated a hobby that you had let fall by the wayside. You know, back in the old days, <laughs> just a few weeks ago, most of the people you saw outside were, were athletes or, or lawn care people. Now, what we're seeing is families outside. I've seen more families out in the yards playing, kids playing in the street. I remember growing up in Corpus Christi that we used to play in the street all the time. We'd play all kinds of games in the street, up and down the neighborhood. I'm seeing that come back. I'm seeing families out walking together, families out bicycling together. We know that old, that old saying, for behind every cloud there's a silver lining. I, I, I hope that we could see the good that is coming out. Don't misunderstand. I am well aware, as are we all, of the difficulty, the challenges, even the tragedies that many people have faced. Those are real. And God's comfort is, is given to all. But I'm wondering, in the days to come, in the months to come, what will we remember about this Easter season? Will our focus be on the negative things? Or will our focus be on the fact that God is bringing us through? God is teaching us a variety of things. I want to share with you one passage of Scripture first out of John's Gospel, the 11th chapter, and you'll recognize this immediately. You'll remember that, that Jesus was very good friends with, 
uh, two sisters and a brother, Mary and Martha and Lazarus. He apparently spent much time with them. They were folks that he loved and, and cherished. And one day Jesus received word that Lazarus had died. Now, if you and I were hearing that word, we would have dropped everything we were doing and ran, ran um, immediately, rushed immediately to be with Mary and Martha and console them and comfort them any way we could. But Jesus didn't do that. He waited a few days. Finally, he went to Bethany, where Mary and Martha and Lazarus lived. And I want to take up the story when he comes in. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him. But Mary still sat in the house. Martha, therefore, said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother shall rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall live even if he dies, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Wow. You see, part of what Easter does, it reinforces the character and the nature and even the promises of God. Jesus, being God in the flesh, said, I am the resurrection and the life. Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. What an incredible promise God has given to the people, to the Easter people, and to anyone who wants to become an Easter people. Because that invitation, that promise is given to all who will receive Jesus as Christ, as Savior and Lord. Now, the story does not end there. There is one more part of this passage that we all need to hear and answer. When Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die, he then asked her this question. He said, do you believe this? You know, that's a question we all have to answer. Pilate had to answer that question. The crowd around Jesus had to answer that question. The centurion at the foot of the cross had to answer that question. You have to answer that question, and I have to answer that question. Do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, and that believing in Him, receiving Him as Savior and Lord, as the resurrected Christ will give us that life. Do you believe this? You know, I, when I was growing up in school, going to high school, we, we learned a lot of things. One of the things our English teacher taught us is that in true-false questions, if part of the answer is false, then the entire question or the entire statement is false. And so if we say, well, I, I kind of do believe that, what does that really mean? It really means that I am not sure. It really means that I have not taken that step in belief yet. Easter is the reaffirmation of God's love for us. See, the character, the nature of God is love. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But you know, the story doesn't even end there. I'd like to go over into Luke's Gospel in the 23rd chapter and kind of pick it up at verse 4. This is after the crucifixion, after the burial, and the women who had been following Jesus, the women who had been believing in Him, had gone to the tomb to make preparation to anoint Him for burial because they hadn't had time to do that the previous day. And it happened that while they were perplexed about this, about the stone being rolled away, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in dazzling apparel. And as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, now get this, why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. 
Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. And from that moment on, there was new power, new life, new hope, new joy, new purpose, new direction, new meaning for all who had believed in Jesus. For the women who followed him, as is illustrated here, and for the disciples who had followed him and then had kind of gotten lost in the, in the confusion of the crucifixion. The newness began to come out. And on the day of Pentecost, we'll talk about that when Pentecost comes, talk about what really happened next. But for right now, the disciples have been infused with new life because Christ has risen. Jesus is not dead. The Savior of the world is alive. And that's what we celebrate on Easter. And why did that happen? Because in John 3, 16, Jesus says that God loved the world so much He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Why did He do that? Because God loves you. Easter is the reaffirmation of God's love for all of creation, for all of humanity. You know, that, uh, the, the way the book of, of Genesis begins is, is mystifying. One of the things that God said is that he created human beings in his own image. Now, we, we have to understand that we have no frame of reference for that. We, we can only trust that that's what God did. But you know what that means? It means that if we being created in the image, image of God, we have the capacity to reflect the character and the nature of God on a human plane, on a human level. And an integral part of that character and nature is that love. Love that honors, love that respects, Love that is self-sacrificing. Love that does not hold a grudge. Love that gives of oneself, regardless of what comes in return. Easter, the risen Christ, is the celebration of all of that and so much more. So this morning, as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, as we remember what God has done for us, as we remember the self-sacrificing love that He gave to us, that precious gift, as we remember all of that, let us ask the question, do you believe this? Is this the, the root of your life? Is this the clarion call that you're hearing to go forth and live victoriously outside the pain of sin and death. Let me share with you one last scripture. Over in the book of Romans, in the 8th chapter, we find how very special that love is. And so this is what we see. In all of these things, in all the trials, in all the tribulations, in all the hardships, in all the difficulties of life, we are more than conquerors. We overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. And Paul says, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. That's God's gift to you. The love that will sustain you. The love that honors you. The love that respects you as an individual and all of us. God's creation. So today, Easter Sunday, let's answer the question, do I really, truly believe? And does that believing manifest itself in the way I live every day? Do I live as though the resurrected Christ were walking alongside of me in everything I do? Do I live in such a way that the resurrected Christ would be honored by my language, by the things I do, the places I go, the relationships I have. Is God honored by my life? He has given us the gift. Oh, folks, let us use that gift to His honor and glory and to our great 
an eternal benefit. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you have given us so very much today. We purpose in our hearts to turn them toward you. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you for loving us so deeply, so warmly, so greatly. Help us to walk in your will, in your word, and in your way, and in your wisdom. Always receiving and sharing that gift of love that you've given to us. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Do Generally, as a part of our worship service and we gather together, we take time to pray together. We remember those who need our prayers. We, we have several folks listed in our bulletin uh, who, for whom we are praying. And so we want to spend a little time in prayer. And uh, there, there are a whole lot of things to pray for today. We want to pray for for God's comfort for those folks who have lost loved ones. We're going to pray for, for our leaders in the country. They need our prayers. And so I want to I want to do something a little bit different this morning. You know, we've had our our, our proxy congregation here, and I want to introduce you uh, to one of them. I want to introduce you to Amy. Amy belongs to Tracy Price and has been all over the country with her. And as Tracy brought Amy to share in the proxy congregation, it just struck me that there are many expectant mothers in our land right now. And I can only imagine the, the concern they feel for the child within them. And I wanted to... Amy just reminded me that there are those ladies out there, those children yet to be born, and I want to pray for them. So join me, would you? Father, we give you thanks for the gift of life. And even as death seems so prominent in our thinking these days, we know that new life is coming into the world. Father, we pray your rich blessing upon expectant mothers. We pray your blessing, Father, that they may be knowing your peace and your calmness, the refreshing of your Holy Spirit for each one of them. May they rest and relax in your presence, knowing that you are in control and in charge. We pray, Father, for the unborn children who are being carried right now. May they come to see the light of day and may mother and child be healed and be encouraged and be blessed by your love for them. Just keep them in your care, O oh God. Bless the fathers to these children, that they too may sense your presence, that they too may stand in awe at this new gift of life that is coming into the world. Bless families across our land, that they may be stronger today than they were yesterday. That they may be closer today than they were a week ago. Oh God, pour forth your Holy Spirit upon families in this nation. Upon children, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters. And let families be strong. In Jesus' name we pray, believing by faith in him. Amen. Well, folks, let, let, let Amy uh, remind you of that need in our land. And let all of these remind you of the need for people to be able to gather together and share times of worship and prayer. I encourage you to spend the next few minutes now praying with whomever you're with right now. And if you're alone, <laughs> just know that you're not alone. God is there with you to guide you, direct you, to love you, and to let you experience His grace. God bless you. God pour out His Holy Spirit upon you and keep you safe in spirit, in soul, and in body. Amen.
as we all know, this Easter season is quite different from any that we've experienced before. We shared that in the message. I'm sure that has gone out in messages over the air in so many ways and so many places. A song was written recently, and it is really a last-minute deal. It was written by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette, who is a prolific songwriter, a Presbyterian pastor, and she has written a hymn that is especially for this season. And she's given all the churches license to use it. And so I'd kind of like to share that with you now.
folks, we pray, pray God's richest blessings for you. We pray that this Easter season may indeed be everything God wants it to be in your life. God bless you. God keep you. God keep you safe. Amen.